staying going in uh, economic theme, we'll turn now quickly to taxes. And this has been referenced already, but I'd like to talk about the rain tax. The Storm Water Management Watershed and Restoration Program, also known as the rain tax, has proven to be a very unpopular new tax with Marylanders. Republican lawmakers have put forward a number of alternatives to modify or repeal the rain tax. However, both Senate President Mike Miller and Speaker Michael Bush have declared any repeal efforts, quote, dead on arrival. What would you propose to do about the rain tax? And we'll start with you, Mr. Long. Thank you. In a nutshell, we have to get rid of it. But here's the problem. The problem is when you have such dominant personalities that have been career politicians for so long, like a Miller or a Bush, if the population in Maryland is not educated to what this stormwater runoff fee really is and how the other five states aren't even participating in helping with Chesapeake Bay cleanup or the Conowingo Dam that hasn't been dredged in Lord knows how long, allowing that silt to come right over through the Susquehanna, right into the Chesapeake, we haven't done a good enough job, and I want to do a better job in that area, educating Marylanders, specifically the constituencies. That's why I've said from the beginning, we need, if you want to run this state, if you want to be governor of the state, we need to spend time in Prince George's County, spend time in Baltimore City, spend time in Montgomery County, because they need to hear the other point of view, the other option. For example, over half of the pollution that goes to the Chesapeake Bay comes down the Susquehanna River. It's not Maryland. But we're not articulating that, in my opinion, the right way. So when those dominating personalities get on stage and say it's dead on arrival, citizens say citizens check the box and say he's exactly right, but he's absolutely wrong. So yes, we want to get rid of the rain tax, but part of my job as your executive is to educate across the state in those areas so people understand we're not working against each other, we're working with each other. The solution is not partisan. It's not about a Republican or a Democrat or Independent. It's about Maryland. That's the kind of leadership I want to bring to the state. Mr. Bay. I think we got to fight the federal regulation on this. Um, Maryland, uh, the administration has become the poster boy for every federal program that comes down the pipe. Um, and it's like we're the testing ground for it. Um, what we need to do is we need to fight the federal regulations and get them off our back and let business be business. Stop blaming us for the problems that are caused by the, in the environment when, you know, it's developers along the, uh, along the bay, along the shoreline that are causing pollution. Um, I think that we got to be real careful about fracking around uh, the bay. Um, that's going to contribute a lot to pollution in the bay. Um, we got to look into other ways of raising that revenue rather than putting it on the taxpayers. Um, there's uh, legalization efforts going on that we're looking at in Colorado to see how that's working out. We'd like to do more work with hemp products uh, made from hemp so that we can uh, start a whole new manufacturing base around that and just get rid of these punitive taxes and uh, programs that are just costing you more money and taking your rights away from you. Thank you. I think we can all thank God that for the last two months we haven't had a snow tax. Because we don't want the governor to know about that because he would have put a snow tax on us. And I, that's just going to continue. I was in the very first meeting the governor had when he was exposing what he was going to do. And the seven county executives were sitting there. And I even had a Democratic partner said, I agree with you, David, that I don't want the rain tax. But when the door opens, I'm going to have to agree with the governor. I was the only one that stood up against it then. We were one of the ten counties that got forced to endorse it and to actually put it in. But we want to repeal it because we've come up with other ideas on how to pay for what needs to be done without taking more money out of your pocket to do it. But they won't listen to us down there. But if we have someone on the second floor, you can see our bumper stickers, we will repeal the rain tax. doesn't matter what Mike Bush or Mike Miller say. We will get it done. We will get rid of it. But I want to warn you about another thing that's coming up. The Department of the Environment right now is going to be working on a trash tax. It's going to be coming out in about two years, but they're working on how they're going to make local governments handle your trash, and that will, again, force local governments to do something. So I want to warn you about this because that for two years we were talking about the rain tax before it came out. You need to know about this ahead of time. So we will repeal it. We will take less money out of your pocket, but we can still clean up the bay, and we can still make this a great place to live. Delegate George. Thank you so much. Um, listen, I bought the rain tax long before the governor even talked about it. League of Conservation Voters, Chesapeake Bay Foundation were talking about a need for this type of a fee. 
And I have fought it, and I have fought it. I'm on the Ways and Means Committee. I fight all of them. But guess what? The rate tax was one tax that did not come before our committee. We would have been ready for it. It went to environmental matters because they thought they could get the votes there. Could not fight it until it came to the floor. And I fought it. Not only that, we sent bullets out to county executives and thing, uh, the, our caucus and members. Sent bullet points out. What was wrong with this tax and not to do this tax? And they did it. I voted against it on the floor. Um, I think it was a, a year later, David had signed it into law in his county. We should have heard more back then, and you can let him answer that, because that's a fact right there. I fought this all the way through. I talked about what it's going to do to the holding areas for import-export businesses. The tax on just my little store in Suburban Park, that parking lot, that little piece of property right there, it's unbelievable what it adds to you every year. If you add together all the tax and fee increases, and it's 80 of them, 80 tax and fee increases over the past eight years, seven and a half years, those don't even equal the implementation of Obamacare, what that will cost business, and the rain tax. I mean, these things are astronomical. And we just can't go there. We just can't go there anymore. And this increase in minimum wage also, which, you know, I fought for the last two weeks. So I'm sorry I didn't come right out and answer it in the beginning. It's kind of worn out. I've been fighting that fight. Uh, in the House uh, for the last two weeks. Uh, we did get rid of the automatic increases after this, but darn, they just won't lower it. They just don't get it. They think they just write money, produce money for you, and it's there. Thanks.